have a mansion. In the post-apocalyptic world by Morning Star LL. Chapter 41, The Developing Fishbone. Fishbone Food Corporation. With a crooked fishbone symbol pinned on the mansion's main door, the new survival camp was born on this piece of wasteland in Wanghai City. In the morning, the fatigued survivors woke up to a delicious aroma. It was the smell of food. Zhou Jieshi wore a white chef apron as she cooked congee with cabbage and ground pork in a pot. The survivors meekly lined up to obtain their breakfast rations. Even in their wildest dreams, they wouldn't have believed that they were given breakfast. Only when full would they have the energy to work, which is why Jiang Chen didn't skimp on food expenses. Although nutrient supply would sustain them, once it hit the stomach, it felt sour without providing enough energy. Regarding the survivor's menu, he asked for advice from Zhou Jieshi before he made a reasonable meal plan. Kanji in the morning, rice at noon with a large serving of a side dish, and for dinner, the same as lunch except with occasional noodles instead of rice. Also, people who made exceptional work progress would receive points. The point structure was implemented by Jiang Chen after careful consideration because he understood the concept well. It rewarded outstanding work based on construction progress to promote similar standards. With these points, the survivors could exchange for instant noodles, crackers, or even canned food luxuries. Jiang Chen temporarily gave Lu Huaxing the responsibility of distributing the points and then reporting it to the storage manager Wang Qin to confirm. They were set to receive one point per day. The cook Zhou Jieshi was awarded based on the quality of the cooked food, and as for Du Yongkong, Jiang Chen personally took care of his points. Food was worth little to him. But for the people who previously endured the pain of starvation, it was a severe understatement to say that Jiang Chen was generous. God, this must be heaven, is what almost everyone was thinking. After quickly finishing breakfast, everyone gathered in the empty front yard. Excluding the people with assigned roles, everyone else followed Jiang Chen's order to separate into groups of four. The individuals specialized in construction acted as the team leaders for their task in building the base. Lu Huaxing, who had severe dark circles, took the full sensory diagram that he completed overnight and explained tirelessly to the team leaders. Some teams were responsible for producing the anti-corrosive concrete while others were focusing on the nanotubes used for the body of the wall. The nanotube polymaterial used to construct the wall was at least two times stronger than a normal concrete wall. The building team silently took the construction materials and snuck outside to avoid alerting the zombies. Slowly, they stretched out the metal wire separators. Another group shot the zombies with the metal wire separators and dragged the bodies away to burn, this was to avoid possible diseases and zombies from evolving. After hearing about Jiang Chen's base development plans, Lu Huaxing decided to use the phased method to expand the base. The first step was to expand in the direction of the underground sewer system and control the exit to it. The construction teams would use the three-story luxury buildings outside of the mansion as the base and construct a wall around it, surrounding all of the smaller buildings within the proximity. After reinforcing the defense, they would then start building the secure corridor outwards, between the underground exit and the base wall. The overall design philosophy was to effectively utilize the abandoned buildings in the area as well as the nanotube polymaterial wall to connect them together. This transformed the abandoned buildings into natural fortifications. They could not only be used as households but also as weapon-equipped watchtowers. After completing the primary structure, more nearby buildings could be included as well. With a clear plan, the construction outside of the mansion was fully underway. Pleased, Jiang Chen looked at the survivors working diligently before returning to the mansion and heading towards Yao Yao's room. It's basically done. Haha, <laughs> although it pretty much copied a mobile game that was popular in the year 2031, it meets most of the criteria that Big Brother set. Yao Yao hopped along as she dragged Jiang Chen beside the table. She then took out the cheap phone worth less than $1,000 and pressed the start button. Skeptical, Jiang Chen opened the game icon named New Era under the scrutiny of Yao Yao's exceedingly high expectations. Jiang Chen was completely stunned. This is a mobile game? No, it wasn't that the game Yao Yao created was terrible, but it was too perfect. The combination of RPG adventure game elements and SLG building elements meant that players could choose to become adventurers with flashy spells, characters that focused on ruling the land, or merchants exploring the seas. People could write their own history in this open world. This was not an advertisement for a poorly designed game, but the actual in-game content. Indeed, it was an open world with sprawling maps. On computers, it would be nothing, but on the mobile platform, this would be considered a miracle in the current industry. The game even had three-dimensional graphics. Even if this game was built for a PC, it would be still be considered perfect. Of all the games Jiang Chen played before, only Skyrim could compare. All in all, the game's perfection made him question if the phone would even be able to run it. 
Ahem, Yao Yao, did you upgrade the hardware on my phone? Jiang Chen asked with a bitter smile. He didn't want a game that was unplayable on all phones. Even if the game was impeccable, it was useless if nobody was able to play. Of course not. Yao Yao sensed Jiang Chen's slight displeasure as her eyes suddenly became sorrowful. Yao Yao specifically considered the phone's hardware level and used D++ language to package the game into 256 megabytes with an automatic program to process when the game initiates the game. Stop stop stop, I don't understand. Just briefly explain how it works. Jiang Chen interrupted Yao Yao's explanation. Uh huh. To put it simply, even with the phone's minimal hardware performance, it is able to support this type of massive online game. It's just that it would be a higher server requirement because I used cloud computing inside which means that the majority of the data processing is going to happen on the server itself. Therefore, the user and CPU would not need to handle too many calculations, which also solves the security problem. Yao Yao proudly shook her tiny head as she continued, to handle the calculations required, I already built a server for Big Brother. The specific process is written inside the document. Despite his inability to understand completely, he could tell that it basically used the server as a larger processor. Therefore, the user only needed to input information and extract the processed information. But wouldn't this increase the user's data cost? Jiang Chen was doubtful. He he, Yao Yao has already considered this. The information exchanged between the server and the user is written by a special code that not only contains a lot of information but packages the data into a small file. It is significantly more efficient compared to the games installed on Big Brother's phone. A day of data usage is only 10 megabytes. 10 megabytes of data was indeed minimal. Jiang Chen was shocked as any other game would have incurred a lot more data. So, did Yao Yao help Big Brother out? Yao Yao blinked her large, doe-like eyes as she looked hopefully at the shocked Jiang Chen. Haha, Yao Yao, you've helped me out tremendously. Jiang Chen suddenly hugged Yao Yao and gave this cute lowly and affectionate kiss on the face. Yao Yao's adorable face suddenly turned a dark red as she buried her head. Yao Yao, if you want anything, tell me, okay? I will definitely do my best. Hmm? Um, anything is okay? Yao Yao didn't know what to answer with as she stuttered. Uh huh. Anything, as long as Big Brother can do it. Jiang Chen squatted down and held onto Yao Yao's shoulder as he nodded. At the moment, he was emotional and wanted to reward this adorable girl. Yao Yao panicked as Jiang Chen kept pressing. Her sweet eyes looked around the room anxiously as her face transformed into a red balloon. At any moment, it seemed as though steam would come out. I, I want, Yao Yao's mouth faintly opened as her eyes looked shakily at Jiang Chen. You want? Jiang Chen leaned closer towards Yao Yao and gazed carefully at her eyes, waiting for her answer. I want. In the end, perhaps it was too exciting, but Yao Yao's head flipped back, and she drowsily fell. Fortunately, Jiang Chen managed to catch her midfall to stop her head from banging into the floor. He still didn't know what Yao Yao wanted. Taking the reprogrammed server and the game, Jiang Chen went to Sun Jiao's place. You're about to leave again? Sun Jiao rolled her eyes as she continued to whip her SK-10 assault rifle. How long are you planning on disappearing this time? Not too long. I'll be back within one month by the latest. Jiang Chen hugged Sun Jiao's smooth waist. Don't miss me too much at night. Pervert. Although she said that, Sun Jiao didn't look annoyed at all. Instead, she leaned up and kissed Jiang Chen on the lips. I'll take care of this side, so come back early. Sun Jiao and Yao Yao's EPs were also installed with the slave's microchip managing software. Jiang Chen made the decision because someone needed to manage these survivors while he was gone. This subprogram allowed Sun Jiao and Yao Yao perform his duties as master. Although this permission could be retracted at any time, Jiang Chen trusted both of them, so the thought hadn't occurred to him. If you have time in the afternoon, teach those guys some shooting skills unless it is dangerous. And also, try to establish a closed corridor between the base and the tunnel, this is critical to the safety of the trade route with the 6th Street. Jiang Chen explained some of the important items related to the base development. Although he could return between both worlds in an instant, once the base construction was stably on its way, he had to spend part of the effort on expanding in the modern world. In the future, he hoped to train Sun Jiao into someone who could manage the daily affairs of the base. Sun Jiao seemed to have realized that too, however, she didn't stop Jiang Chen from leaving. Not only did Jiang Chen mature, but Sun Jiao was also growing through their relationship. Compared to the audacious girl that constantly desired Jiang Chen, she began to calmly and maturely express her love differently. She believed Jiang Chen, and she knew he would never leave her here. Uh-huh, I know. Sun Jiao reached out to fix his collar. You've changed. Jiang Chen grabbed her hands as he gazed into her eyes affectionately. Hmm? Am I prettier or uglier? Sun Jiao rolled her eyes. Just as she wanted to pull her hands away, she realized that he was holding on to them tightly. 
her face began to blush. Of course prettier. Accompanied by Sun Jiao's surprised yelp, he pushed her onto the bed. For some reason, the moment Sun Jiao fixed his collar, he fell in love. It was as though the person in front of him was his wife. This newfound feeling made his blood pump. Or perhaps it was because he hasn't relieved himself in a while. The door was slammed shut. The affection in the room began to merge into the sunny morning sky. Chapter 42, Home. Still the crowded room. He took a deep breath as he tried to savor the clean air, but a bitter smile formed on his face as he realized his nose was stuffed with dust and even on his bed that had been uninhabited for so long. Jiang Chen examined the apartment he had spent the past two years in and suddenly felt reminiscent of his time here. Shaking his head, he threw this emotion away. Perhaps it was now time to say goodbye. Jiang Chen took out his phone and called the landlord's number before he moved it two inches away from his ear in anticipation. Hello? Jiang Chen. That apartment, if you want to continue to rent, then you better pay half of the year's rent right now. Even if you don't want it, other people want it. I felt pity seeing you by yourself, but if it weren't for that, I would have already thrown your stuff out. Fu asterisk K, I called you so many times, and you didn't even pick up, you know money be asterisk starred. You're playing the disappearing game with me? Wu Jia roared his expletives on the other end, thinking Jiang Chen had no other options. Of course, if this was half a month ago, he would have been Jiang Chen's only chance. But now, you can rent the house to other people, Jiang Chen said calmly. What, what did you say? His voice was suddenly surprised. Wu Jia didn't expect Jiang Chen to be so defiant and threatened to stop renting right away. If you're not going to rent my place, where are you going to live? If you continue to call me a bastard, I'll make sure you'll never open your mouth again. The landlord couldn't hear any emotional variation from Jiang Chen's voice, which remained light and calm. Wu Jia was about to curse again, but the chill in Jiang Chen's voice crept into his mind and clogged the words at his throat, making him unable to make a sound. Jiang Chen didn't want to spend any more effort on this dumb asterisk SS so he hung up. Even though the landlord had given him a lot of trouble, he didn't have the energy to care. If a dog barked at you every day, you can't bark back at him after all. It was a waste of time and his own standards. Of course, if this guy continued to bother him, he wouldn't mind teaching him a lesson. It was the other side's freedom to say something, but in Jiang Chen's mind, it was then his freedom to decide how to react. After hanging up, Jiang Chen's phone began to vibrate with notifications as his phone screen filled up with missed calls. Other than the landlord, Xia Xiu had also called him, probably worried about the company president who had left on such a long absence without leaving any messages. Jiang Chen smiled, but his finger soon trembled. There were at least ten missed calls from his home. His eyes began to tear up. Perhaps, he should take some time to go home. He took a deep breath as he suppressed his grief at being so far away from home, then dialed the familiar number. Hello? Mom, it's me. Chen Air, you finally called. Your dad has been so worried. The familiar yet excited voice transmitted through the phone speaker. Old man, Chen Air called back. Mom, don't use that name. It's too childish. Jiang Chen smiled as he blinked his eyes. What's childish? Listen to how you're speaking to your mom. You're not obedient anymore. When a steady roar resonated from the other line, Jiang Chen felt relieved. Looks like mom and dad are doing well. This also made Jiang Chen feel slightly less guilty about not visiting home in so long. In the past, he was worried about disappointing his parents' high expectations without a successful career. Using work as an excuse, he stayed away from visiting home many times, even during Chinese New Year when he lied and said he had to work overtime. He knew that even without success, his parents would still welcome him with open arms. But he was the one who couldn't accept it. Now, however, all of those concerns were gone. Mom, Dad, your son has finally achieved something. Jiang Chen's hand trembled as he smiled and responded to their reminders and advice. Son, it must be tiring out there. Do you have enough money? Don't tire yourself out. This is the starting point of your career. If you don't have enough money, let your mom know, I still have some savings. No, your mom is off the mark. Our son's key priority is buying a house. No girl will like you if you don't own a house. Son, it's okay to be tired. We're men, and we can do it. Your mom and dad still have some savings. Let's see if we can buy a house at Wanghai City with down payments. With a house, you can then bring a girlfriend back for your mom and dad. We're waiting for grandchildren. No, mom and dad, your son is successful now. I opened a company at Wanghai City, and I even have people working for me now. I'll take care of the house myself, so you guys don't have to worry. Take care of your health and don't always think about saving money. If you want to buy something, just buy it. If you don't have enough, I'll get it for you. Jiang Chen rubbed his eyes and smiled. You're teaching your dad a lesson? Ha ha, honey, our son is accomplished now. Ha ha, his father said excitedly. What? 
Chenair, you opened your own company? Be careful, don't let other people deceive you. I've seen the news recently. His mother's voice was filled with concern. Don't worry. My son is much smarter than you. Jiang Jianguo laughed. When he heard that his son had established himself, his heart was filled with a happiness that was greater than winning the lottery. After dinner, I'll go brag with the other old guys at the door. Our son, a university student, opened a company in Wanghai City, and other people are working for him. That's good. We can solve the girlfriend problem as well. Everyone wants to be married into a big city. Our neighbor's daughter doesn't have a boyfriend, and neither does Xia who lives in the building in front as well. Your son is my son as well. Li Xuemei argued back. As they continued to banter, Jiang Chen gently rubbed his slightly sore eyes with his left hand. This was the feeling of home, something he had avoided. The purest relationship in the world was family. He smiled and thought that he should take some time to visit them. After his phone call with his parents ended, he lied back onto the bed, disregarding the dust flying everywhere. It was time to move out. He felt slight regret as he wanted to lie on the bed a bit longer. 500 million US dollars. That's 3 billion renminbi. While Jiang Chen didn't know the exact exchange rate, it was likely around this much. What kind of mansion should I buy? He never considered this question before. A mansion, let alone a simple apartment, was something Jiang Chen had never dared to imagine. But now this was all nothing. Since there were areas he was clueless about, he decided to ask for some help. He lifted his phone, but his finger froze in place. Who should I call? An awkward smile crept onto his face as he realized that he didn't have many friends. That was fine. After deliberating for a while, Jiang Chen sighed as dialed Xia Xiu's number. Since he needed to call her anyways, he might as well ask for some advice at the same time. Xia Xiu was about to lose her mind. She was wondering where Jiang Chen disappeared to when vibrations suddenly came from her pocket. Without hesitation, she took out her phone and saw the familiar name. She was so angry that she laughed. Hello? Am I hearing this correctly? Our president just called me back. The voice didn't sound too cold, at least Jiang Chen could heard her teeth grinding. Ahem, I have been busy with business. That's not the point. Jiang Chen shamelessly changed the topic. Oh? What kind of business requires you to turn your phone off? Do you know the company is in the initial startup phase? Hiring? Development plan? Is this your business or my business? The voice on the other side was so fast that Jiang Chen moved the phone slightly away. Xia Xiu's drastic reaction to his disappearance surprised him. There were more important things at hand, however. Can you go house hunting with me? Xia Xiu hung up the phone. Two seconds later, the phone rang again. She suppressed the anger in her chest as she inhaled, resisting the urge to hang up right away. Ahem, don't hang up on me. I'm serious. Can you find some time? What do I have to do with you buying a house? Xia Xiu said in an icy voice as her chest furiously heaved up and down. Jiang Chen's playful attitude made her feel disrespected as she had been worrying about him for the past few days. That's right, disrespected. After spending so much effort on something, it was completely disregarded. Of course it has to do with you. If you have nothing else to do, you can come and chill. Jiang Chen said with a chuckle, completely unaware of Xia Xiu's feelings. When she heard Jiang Chen's words, Xia Xiu paused. Hmm? She confusedly touched her forehead and felt the unnatural temperature on her hand. I don't have a fever. This is weird. Hello, are you listening to me? Oh right, I've already finished developing the mobile game. The next step is to hire people to maintain the server. I trust that you know the hiring process better than I do, so you can take care of it. But if you need me to be at the interview, I don't mind either. But only on the condition that you'll go house hunting with me. Okay, Xia Xiu agreed without considering. On after did she realize with an odd feeling how illogical and decisive her answer was. Must be because of work. If I don't say yes, he'll disappear again. Uh-huh, that's right, it's because of work. After hanging up, Xia Xiu rubbed her temples as she tried to justify her actions. Although even this action felt unnecessary and unnatural. Done. Jiang Chen stretched as he threw the phone to the side. Girls were more detailed, so it was better to bring her along. Despite his narcissism, he knew too well that his taste was significantly lacking. With the developer's sale pitch, there was no way he'd be able to discern truth from lies. He didn't wonder if he was interested in Xia Xiu or not. It was just that when he held his phone, the only person in the city who came to mind was his ex-boss. No, his employee now, haha. Since he needed to buy a house, then naturally it required cash. Jiang Chen's storage dimension was filled with gold, but it didn't make sense to go buy a house with pounds of gold. He grabbed the phone again and called an international number. However, when he pressed the phone against his ear, he frowned. Chapter 43, Robert's Problem. The phone rang for a long time without an answer. 
Just as Jiang Chen was about to hang up, someone picked up. Hello, an unfamiliar voice curtly said in English. The voice was deep and slightly scratchy, not at all like Robert. Jiang Chen, Robert's Han friend. And you are? Jiang Chen used his broken English to slowly answer. Nick. My boss is currently in trouble, can I trust you? Nick asked after some hesitation. Of course. Robert is a good guy. Even though I'm in Han, I still miss him dearly. Also, we have unfinished business. Jiang Chen dug deeply into his vocabulary to finally articulate what he needed to say. The other side remained silent for a while before Nick finally explained the situation. Because of Jiang Chen's terrible English, Nick purposely slowed down for him, and after a while, Jiang Chen finally understood what happened. To put it simply, Robert went on a business trip to Iraq two days ago and was kidnapped. With Nick's combat ability, this normally would not have happened, but the insider they worked with multiple times turned out to be a traitor, the group that came out to meet them weren't local militants but instead masked terrorists. This was going to be problematic. Fu asterisk K, you have your gold business, but you ended up going to this ghetto place and dropped the ball at such a critical moment. Regardless of Jiang Chen's internal curses, however, Robert had his own reasons. During this period of time, he planned on staying safe, but because Jiang Chen failed to follow up with him, he started to question the deal. Did the eastern man really have business for him? There were no other messages, so Robert decided to stop waiting and accepted the insider deal that had a low risk. Curses aside, Jiang Chen still had to find a way to solve the problem. For now, he didn't have any other routes to sell the gold for cash since it would be insane to sell 500 million US dollars worth of gold without proof of ownership. He did not wish to get tangled up with the authorities. So how about a visit to Iraq? Jiang Chen was hesitant at first, but upon further thought, a smile appeared on his face. Perhaps it wasn't such a bad idea. With his special equipment and Superman-like body conditions, he was not afraid about the possible danger, especially since he could just run away if there was trouble. Turn the corner and travel to the apocalypse for a few days, and no one would catch him. At the same time, Jiang Chen also had other considerations as well. If he helped Robert, not only would the gold problem be resolved, but he would also gain another backup option. Even if he had to leave the country in the future, there would always be a place for him to go. He trusted that Robert would help him out if he was in need. Although they only met once, he could tell that Robert had a spirit that respected contracts. This was especially critical. If he was someone who only chased after profit without any regard to promises, then he was a waste of emotional investment. Even if Jiang Chen decided to save him, it was easier to find another partner. Once Jiang Chen made up his mind, he didn't waste a second as he immediately booked the tickets online to Dubai. He planned to lay over in Dubai before heading to Baghdad. Since he already has his passport, all he needed was a travel visa before departing. Once ticketing was resolved, he immediately packed and left. No longer staying at his rented apartment, he found a hotel to stay at instead. Only after taking care of the gold problem would he consider buying a house. Although selling several tons of gold at once would be difficult, trading in a few kilograms wasn't entirely impossible. Jiang Chen, who was running out of money, retrieved a business card and called Mr. Liu at the gold store to book an appointment. Jiang Chen ended up exchanging 7 kilograms of gold, but since he didn't care about the decimals, he sold it for 1.5 million. What Jiang Chen didn't notice as he left the gold store, however, was the look of greed that flashed across Liu Anshan's poker face. The more he thought about it, Liu Anshan was certain that this guy had a special means of acquiring large amounts of gold. Perhaps by digging in graves? Or through illegal mines? Liu Anshan didn't know. All he knew was that this guy had much more gold. He had Jiang Chen secretly investigated. After acquiring the funds last time, he immediately spent everything. Now in less than a month later, he came again to sell more gold. What did this mean? It meant that he had an unimaginable amount of gold. If he came to possess it accidentally, there was no way for him to have spent it all so quickly. As for how dangerous Jiang Chen was? Liu Anshan already had him investigated with the help of a friend. He was just an employee at a clothing store in Shermao who ended up fired. There was no way he had any special background. It was time to contact his brother. When he thought about his brother, however, he was slightly hesitant. He didn't want to have anything to do with his brother, but in this case, he had no choice. Despite his misgivings, Liu Anshan made up his mind and called the number. Hello? Brother? It's me, Liu Anshan. Let's cut the small talk. I want to propose a business deal if you're interested. Let's split it 50-50, but the lowest I'm willing to go is 40-60. No less. His brother was Liu Chonglong, the head of Hongyi Gang and a prominent figure among Wang Hai City's crime scene. Jiang Chen even had a small conflict with the Hongyi Gang before. After leaving the gold store, Jiang Chen took a taxi to a rural area. 
he needed to rent a storage space to hold the supplies he needed in the apocalypse. Although online shopping was convenient, it was not a good long-term strategy. With 30 people now living in the base, it would be much easier to purchase in bulk from food distributors and also save on cost. After paying for one year of rent, Jiang Chen rented a small storage space. The area around and inside had excellent privacy protection which pleased him. The rent was not expensive either for a rural area at 3,000 a month. After renting the storage space, Jiang Chen didn't rest but instead found the number of a Wanghai City food distributor online and dialed. He cut straight to the point and ordered 10 tons of rice, 5 tons of flour, 300 boxes of canned meat, and 200 boxes of canned vegetables, as well as salt and oil. With such a large order coming in, the boss of the distributing company eagerly took the order. After getting the address, he guaranteed that the goods would arrive within two hours, but only after paying a down payment up front. Jiang Chen instead paid for the full amount. Once the full amount of 160,000 renminbi arrived in his bank account, the boss became frantic. He didn't know how he got lucky to have met someone this rich. The full amount had been paid without hesitation. Immediately, he began to prepare and even personally rode the truck as they arrived at the storage. Jiang Chen obviously realized the boss' flattering words and emphasized that if the quality of this batch was good, he would come to him the next time as well. The boss of course promised that every bag of rice was newly produced and all of the canned food were from certified producers. Jiang Chen didn't comment and instead hinted that the next batch would preferably be without labels. The boss paused momentarily before he smiled mischievously at Jiang Chen and agreed. It wasn't difficult for him to acquire products that way as he would just contact the people he knew at the factory. For him, it was one less step in their production. After some small talk, the boss shrewdly left, sensing that Jiang Chen still had things to do. After the truck drove away, Jiang Chen returned to the storage and shut the door tight. It was time to do the real business. He inhaled deeply and looked around at the supplies that nearly filled the entire storage. He then lit up a cigarette, which was something that he did every time he traveled between the two dimensions. In front of Miss Sun Jiao's shocked and joyful gaze, Jiang Chen moved all of the supplies into the swimming pool that had previously contained the gold. The swimming pool was now full of food. I'll help you get a couple more vaults of gold, Sun Jiao blurted out after gathering her thoughts from her temporary shock. This was the only thing that came out of her mouth. PSHH, I haven't sold all of the gold yet. And even if you got more, I wouldn't be able to exchange it for money. Also, these supplies cost nothing there, Jiang Chen explained. Then why don't you bring back more? Sun Jiao was slightly embarrassed. She tried to cover her expression with a furious look and a flash of her teeth at Jiang Chen, except in Jiang Chen's eyes, it was all harmless coquetry. Don't be greedy. Would you even be able to finish it? Jiang Chen laughed as he patted Sun Jiao's butt. I can. Even if I can't, I'd just leave it here. Sun Jiao blushed as she stared at Jiang Chen again. Don't become a little pig. Then I'd have to eat Yao Yao, Jiang Chen said jokingly. Do you want to die? You pervert. Embarrassed, Sun Jiao lifted her hand and hit Jiang Chen on the shoulder, but from Jiang Chen's smiling face, she could tell it hadn't hurt at all. Of course Jiang Chen didn't mean it, he was not perverted enough to eat Yao Yao. Also, Sun Jiao's flexible waist didn't seem like it would grow fatter anytime soon. Oh, and find a few detailed-oriented people to scratch off the production date and the other symbols. You have to be extremely careful with this, or maybe you and Yao Yao should take care of it personally. In the future, I'll try to obtain supplies without any labels. After repeatedly urging Sun Jiao in a few more things, Jiang Chen traveled back to the modern world. He looked at the empty storage unit again and headed back out. He locked the door and cautiously checked to see if it was visible from the outside before he walked to the road and called a taxi to go back to the city. In the car, he called Xiaoxiu. What? You have to leave the country? For how long? Surprisingly enough, Xiaoxiu didn't seem too shocked by the news of Jiang Chen disappearing again. Perhaps she was used to it. At least this time, Jiang Chen told her his plan and didn't just disappear on her without any warning. The last time, Xiaoxiu had been so afraid that she almost called the police thinking he got into an accident. Hmm, not too long, business related. I'll be back in a week. Then what about the company? Xiaoxiu sighed resignedly. Of course it's up to you, he he. When she heard Jiang Chen's laughter, Xiaoxiu tiredly rubbed her temple. I stored all of the game data onto the USB drive, so I'll send it to you in a bit. You're much more familiar with the advertisement process than I am. Hee <laughs> hee, so you'll have to work a bit harder this time. I'll treat you to dinner after I come back. Jiang Chen felt he was becoming more shameless by the minute. Treat me for a week. Xiaoxiu said angrily. No problem, one month works as well. The hearty voice from the other side made her unable to vent her frustration. She hung up and flung the phone aside, leaning back against sofa with a huff. This guy. If she were his boss like before, 
she thought about what happened and suddenly became silent. For some reason, she was suddenly reminded of how she had fired Jiang Chen and the miserable time when she herself had lost her job. Suddenly, she felt terrible about herself. Guilt? Unease? Self-blame? She couldn't explain the emotion. The back of head pressed against the sofa. She didn't know what she was thinking about and just stared blankly at the ceiling. She liked this modernized apartment as the two-floor design really combined spaciousness with comfort. Despite her uptight work style, in her free time, she was someone who had a taste for a luxurious lifestyle. With a salary of 10,000 RMB, she spent half as rent, but she didn't feel bad about it. She believed that the purpose of earning money was to improve life quality and excessive saving only demonstrated lack of confidence in the future. Jiang Chen also didn't expect her to pay back the loan, so she didn't have to save money for that either. What she didn't realize until now was that while she usually carefully planned her spending, she hadn't even considered paying back her loan in her monthly budget. She blankly stared at the intricate crystal chandelier as she remembered her time in the cheap apartment that cost 800 a month. Back then, she had to carefully plan every meal. For some reason, a man's face surfaced in her mind, that always grinning face. To be honest, the normally serious Xia Shiyu really disliked that improper grin. However, she could not come to dislike the face. With dilated pupils, Xia Shiyu touched her lips but didn't know why. There was a throb in her heart that she had never felt before. What is this? Whatever, I'll stop thinking. She shook her head and stood up after turning off the TV. Since Jiang Chen was sending the USB drive in a bit, it was not good to see him like this. With the thought of taking a shower, Xia Shiyu entered the bedroom and prepared clothes to change into. She then walked into the bathroom and shut the glass door. She stared at the water coming out of the shower head and let the clear water trickle down her flawless skin. Xia Shiyu entered a daze once more. Hmm? After the jog, I already showered. Chapter 44, Xia Shiyu's Apartment He got off at Xingyuan Community as Jiang Chen walked towards Xia Shiyu's rented apartment. The community had a lovely scenery. This girl certainly knew how to enjoy life. The side of the road was covered with plants and trees as a curious smile appeared on his face. The basketball court in the middle of the community had a few high school students playing a game. On the small field with training equipment, elders were practicing taiji. Some were also playing chess under the tree. Families were taking a walk and also young people were jogging. The entire community was crowded but not noisy. Walking into the apartment building, Jiang Chen pressed the elevator button. This girl rented a place on the 14th floor, is she not afraid of heights? He walked to the door and rang the bell, as he heard the sound of steps approach the door. You are here. Komein. The door opened, and Xia Shi with a towel in her hand showed up at the door. Jiang Chen noticed there was still a few droplets of water on her shoulder, seems like she showered not long ago. Are you not going to come in? Xia Shiyu saw that Jiang Chen didn't move and slightly raised her eyebrows, and asked confusedly. Ahem, yes, yes. I was just thinking about something. Jiang Chen coughed as he recollected himself from her stunning look. Oh? I am going to guess it's not work-related. Xia Shiyu shrugged and walked back into her room. My computer is here, put your USB in there. Jiang Chen closed the door behind him and took off his shoes. The moment he looked up, Jiang Chen saw her gorgeous figure. Maybe it was because she just showered, but Xia Shiyu's body had a lingering scent of the shower gel's fragrance. The loose pajama slightly dampened by water looked a lot more fitting as it pressed against her beautiful figure. Especially the curve of her butt. Jiang Chen gulped in confusion. This girl is not seducing me right. If Xia Shiyu knew the narcissistic thought in Jiang Chen's mind, she probably would have angrily kicked him out. The bedroom was often filled with its owner's fragrance, Jiang Chen didn't think too much about it in the beginning. However, when Jiang Chen walked into Xia Shiyu's bedroom and smelled her beautiful scent, he felt awkward. But seeing Xia Shiyu's seriousness when setting up the computer, Jiang Chen had to suppress the odd feeling. Okay, connect the USB. Xia Shiyu got up and walked out of the room. Jiang Chen ashamedly touched his nose, but when he saw the desktop filled with work related documents, he felt guilty as he quickly regathered his concentration and focused on work. He inserted the USB into the computer and copied the folders. Yao Yao put a lot of attention into the work as all the information relation to the game was compiled together. With this information, the application procedure to the authority would be much simpler to do. Of course, it's Xia Shiyu that had to do it. Is it done? Let me take a look. Xia Shiyu's voice made Jiang Chen jump as he didn't know when she had returned to the room along with a chair. She sat beside Jiang Chen. She wore her glasses while a professional look and grabbed the mouse from Jiang Chen's hand as she scanned line by line through the document about the game. The light fragrance post shower whiffed from her hair, which made Jiang Chen a bit thirsty. To be honest, Xia Shiyu looked absolutely gorgeous by any standards, a form of beauty that was almost unearthly. 
But before Jiang Chen never thought about her in this way as he just viewed her as someone who could manage the company, as well as one of the few friends he had. However, under the influence of the hormonal fragrance, even if he wanted to stop thinking about it, it was already out of his control. They were also in a flirtatious environment. The warm colored light and wallpaper could make anyone fall asleep, but it could also ignite people's desire. What's worse was that there was a soft bed behind them. Bed, beauty, in the same room. He carefully examined the side of his ex-boss face, it looked stunning. Jiang Chen's breath began to shorten. Whoever created this game is a genius. Xia Xiu's untimely exclamation interrupted Jiang Chen's bewildered thoughts. She pushed up her glasses and continued, it's impeccable in every category. The usage of cloud computing to reduce the hardware requirement, at the same time not costing a lot of data. Although I am not a professional in the game development, if the game's quality is equal to what the report stated, I can confidently say that this game will be groundbreaking in the history of mobile games. Ahem, of course, I hired someone professional to handle the game design aspect. We'll focus on the operation of it. Also, the game server requires specialized equipment. There is instruction along with it, just give it to the specialists to take care of. Jiang Chen pretended to cough as he tried to cover up his peaking act. He recollected his thoughts and refocused on work. Hmm? Did you bring the server? Xia Xiu lightly frowned as she looked confusingly at the PC-sized equipment in her room. Of course I brought it. I put it behind the door, and you didn't notice. Jiang Chen rushed to explain. He remembered after he came into the room. So he brought it out from the storage dimension after she went into the living room. Xia Xiu didn't persist with these trivial details as she nodded before asking a few more questions related to the game. Jiang Chen did his best to explain and stated that all the information should be in the documents. I'll organize the information out which will take around two days. Although my experience in this is nearly zero, after the extensive period of study, I should be able to. I trust your ability. Jiang Chen interrupted her with a smile. Jiang Chen's look of trust made Xia Xiu's face feel hot. When Jiang Chen was smelling Xia Xiu's fragrance, she also sensed the smell from Jiang Chen's body. Don't be mistaken as it was not body odor. Instead, it was a unique hormonal scent. Just like the fragrance in her room, Xia Xiu couldn't tell, but Jiang Chen as the opposite sex could clearly detect this unique aroma. The speed of her heartbeat increased which made Xia Xiu a little frustrated and nervous. Although she didn't dislike this kind of feeling, she felt embarrassed by not concentrating on her work. Yes, embarrassed. She always worked diligently and was proud of the very fact. Aha, uh -huh, I won't disappoint your expectation. A stiff tone. Jiang Chen sensed that Xia Xiu's facial expression was a bit rigid as he felt uneasy as well. Did this girl figure out that I peeked at her? Of course, he thought too much. Xia Xiu had her reasons for showing such an expression. Also, I have some recommendations for the company site. If we want to get the company on track sooner, let's take care of these things as early as possible. Xia Xiu opened an office rental site with listings of empty offices. This, the Continental Building Floor 12. It is near the subway, and all the necessary services are near. The price is also reasonable. Take a look at the pictures and see what you think. Xia Xiu skillfully opened the image below and showed Jiang Chen. The work atmosphere has erased some of the flirtatious feelings out of the air, even Jiang Chen became focused. Of course, he still didn't really know what he was doing, even if he focused. Then this one it is. Jiang Chen scratched his face. He thought that he probably wouldn't go into the office very often, so he didn't care about where it would be located. Aren't you going to compare it to the other ones? This one too, although the ease of transportation is not ideal, it is near the universities which would make the hiring process a lot easier. For a small and new company like us, it's hard to attract experienced professionals to jump ship and join us. What do you mean a small company, where's your confidence? Jiang Chen rolled his eyes as he said unsatisfied. Now that I see the president is so confident, I am also very hopeful for the company. Then the company location will be. This girl is becoming more skilled at handling me. Jiang Chen thought. To be fair, it is great to have an assistant. No, she is the CEO. Whatever, it is all the same. Jiang Chen decided to choose the office near the university. For no other reason than that the building was only six stories high. He hates high places. If he told Xia Xiu the real reason, she would have been shocked. The rent was 2,000 renminbi a month. She could take care of the remaining items tomorrow, and Jiang Chen even assigned her to do the renovation. Don't save money for me, I'll invest another 10 million RMB in a few days, let's do something magnificent. When Xia Xiu asked how long the term of the lease should be and what's the budget for renovation, Jiang Chen waved his hand and replied, 10 million. Once he takes care of the gold, 100 million will be nothing. Let me be honest, if the game is already developed, 
the only thing the company needs to take care of is operation and maintenance. So we won't need this much funding within the short period of time, Xiaoxiu replied with a bitter smile. Haha, who said we can't use it? I told you before that we are going into the phone industry. Once the phone is developed, iPhone and Samsung will all be giving their market share to us. Jiang Chen recklessly laughed. For the president's brazen laughter, Xiaoxiu only rolled her eyes and didn't respond. She didn't think Jiang Chen had the capability to do so. Even if he did, 10 million was nowhere enough for development and production. But Jiang Chen didn't react to her rolled eyes. Yes, iPhone 6 was a fantastic product, but it was nowhere comparable to the technology from 100 years later. It doesn't even have to be 100 years later. Jiang Chen just needed to ask the starving technology genius to improve those ancient communication products and release them. Ahead of the market by 10 years would be enough for all the competitors to chase after him. Also, he must ensure that the phone won't be replicable so that his hard work won't be stolen. He doesn't want to see any knockoffs of future technology. The key technology should be patented. The phone would have to come later as the short term focus was going to be placed on software. Also, can I know where you are going to be in the next few days? Which country are you going to for business? Xiaoxiu had hesitated for a moment before she interrupted his envisioning. Hm? Iraq, Jiang Chen carelessly spilled out the truth. Iraq. Xiaoxiu almost choked on her own spit. What kind of business required him to go there? Chapter 45, The Iraq Trip. Food, yours. His English was more broken than the Eastern man. A terrorist with a masked face and an AK-47 placed a bowl of muddy-looking soup and black bread on the table. He mocked the white man who crawled into the corner before he turned around and slammed the door. Robert weakly moved when he saw that the man left. He quickly walked to the table and grabbed the rock-hard bread. His blonde hair was already greasy, and his face looked pale, but his eyes remained bright. Even if he didn't know what's the soup or the hardly chewable bread in his hands was made out of, he didn't look the slightest bit remorseful. He chewed carefully, despite the fact that the food was barely edible. But he knew that this would maximize the amount of energy he had and would preserve it. Then, he could seek the opportunity to escape. Robert's face did not look distressed at all. Even if the poor reporter that stayed beside him yesterday was screaming in pain, he remained calm. Without a doubt, that guy must have his throat slit and recorded. The majority of the government would not compromise with the terrorist groups and pay ransom for the hostages. Maybe in a couple of days when he heads back, he could see that poor sucker on Facebook, in the form of video, if he could go back. This was not the first time Robert faced situations like this. Militants in Kuwait kidnapped him and almost slit his throat. But the good thing was that Blackwater International took the money and did some good deeds with the UA Army. They managed to save him at the absolute last moment. However, this time it was far more questionable. Although he was a UA citizen and acted in the interest of the country, recently his act of smuggling oil from Iran has caught the attention of the FBA. Rumor has that special agents were collecting evidence in this area. Maybe due to this insider's betrayal, this was the FBA's act of taking him out, then why would the UA army save him? The bald Biden had no guts. If the FBA just threatened him a little, he would join the witness protection program and sell out his old friend. Robert was not too angry at this. He had seen his fair share of betrayal. If he died here this time, then Biden was lucky, but if he managed to return to Los Santos, he he. A ferocious smile flashed across Robert's face. Of course, all this talk would be nonsense because his probability of survival was so slim. Although Nick was reliable and a fitted warrior, he was alone after all. Facing a group of fully equipped terrorists would be unrealistic. Especially in hostage rescue, that must be done with one swift action. He mocked at himself for the thought as he finished the last bit of bread before lying on the bed again. His instinct told him that he would be okay this time. His instinct had saved him on more than one occasion, so he trusted his instinct and didn't give up the hope for survival. Jiang Chen got off the plane and stepped into the Baghdad International Airport. The religious city was not exactly as they described it in the news, in constant chaos. At least, not near the airport. The marks left by the war has been slowly healed through the passage of time. It was also evident by the constant flow of foreign tourists. However, he knew this prosperity was limited. IS already occupied half of the area in northern Iraq. Even if the sky above Baghdad were still clear, it wouldn't take long before a gloom of war cast its shadow. Jiang Chen and Shade stood in front of the airport for a while before he took out his phone to check Google Maps. He quickly found the arranged meeting spot with Nick. Just as he was about to call a taxi, an unlicensed car stopped in front of him. Sir, do you need a taxi? It was in Han, although not fluent. Yes, do you know Han? Jiang Chen was surprised. He had paused for a moment before he opened the car door. 
It's because I often find jobs near your wells, for example servicing PetroChina workers. So I learned Han in the process. The young man smiled with his white teeth exposed as he skillfully started the car. My name is Asa, what about you sir? Jiang Chen. Head to this place on the map. Jiang Chen showed the location on the map to Asa. Okay. With the changing scenery passing by him, Jiang Chen chatted with the taxi driver, who was around the same age as him and he heard some interesting stories. Sir if you are here to travel, I recommend a few cities in the south. However, don't head north as Haditha is almost conquered, it might not be long until Baghdad is unsafe too. Hmm? Looks like you know these things pretty well. How long have you been doing this? Jiang Chen smiled. For about six years, I have been driving taxis ever since I left the army. I also spent some time being a tourist guide, Asa replied. You have been in the army before? I feel like you are no older than me, Jiang Chen asked with confusion in his voice. I enlisted when I was twelve, in what you guys call the Iraq War. Asa shrugged as the topic did not seem to bother him. A hectic show without even seeing the enemy. It was over before it started. I just felt like Saddam gave me a gun and sent me to surrender in the front line. He was amazed by the young man's experience but didn't continue on the topic further. The car soon arrived at the destination, and Jiang Chen generously handed a 10 US dollars bill to him. He watched the car leave as he stretched and looked for Nick. Here. Just at that moment, the foreigner sitting under the shade, drinking coffee, waved at Jiang Chen. Jiang Chen sat directly across from Nick. But before he sat down, Nick hastily began speaking. Just yourself? Yes. Jiang Chen grabbed an empty cup and poured himself a cup. It was bitter, seems to be authentic Turkish coffee. Jiang Chen took a sip before putting it down and noticed Nick's slightly disappointed look. Hmm? You seem disappointed? Jiang Chen raised his eyebrows. You are an adamant warrior, but with just the two of us, it is going to be difficult, Nick replied with his voice lowered. I am not just strong, you'll see. Jiang Chen shrugged. Where is your weapon? It's in the car. Do you need me to prepare one for you as well? Nick saw that Jiang Chen came empty-handed and asked. Not necessary, I have prepared my weapon already. I believe that you already have clues about the whereabouts of your boss, let's find him then. Hee <laughs> hee, he still owes me a deal, Jiang Chen smiled and spoke with a relaxed voice as if he never viewed these terrorists as real threats. Jiang Chen's relaxed mood made Nick frown slightly, but since there were no other options at the time, it would be dangerous to be delayed by even a day. Soldier's instinct told him that this guy was not to be underestimated, but he was not certain of his exact level. Let's talk about the exact details on the car. Robert is in great danger. If you saw the news yesterday, you'd know that IS already executed a UA reporter. If they don't receive the ransom by tomorrow, they might kill the hostage. Nick lit up a cigarette and handed Jiang Chen one as he took Jiang Chen to his car. Your boss can't afford the ransom? Jiang Chen lit up the cigarette. IS wanted the UA government to pay, Nick said emotionlessly. The meaning behind that was evident. The car started as Nick took the wheel and headed out of the town. They passed by two inspection stations, but it was rather procedural as the stations let them go when there were no bombs found. The assault rifle hidden under Nick's seat was not detected during both inspections. On the way, Nick explained what kind of trouble they encountered this time. It was about five days ago, Robert accepted an old friend's invitation, Biden, to come to Iraq. It was a military arms deal worth 20 million USD. The buyer was supposed to be a militant fighting on the front line against IS. Order from the UA middlemen and acquiring additional firearm was the unspoken rule on this desert. Although Robert sensed something was off, he was not too suspicious. It was a deal over 20 million USD. He would earn 1 million just by working with him. Biden was such a great guy. After he arranged the transportation of military arms on the battlefront between the government militants and IS, he met a bunch of extreme terrorists screaming Allah Akbar. Nick was indeed a great warrior as he used an M27 to kill at least 10 fearless terrorists, but that was useless. To acquire those arms, the IS with secret information sent out at least a battalion of forces and was equipped with heavy machine guns and RPG. He almost didn't get out of there alive. The firearm fell into the hands of the IS, and Robert was captured. Nick fought fearlessly to find an escape path to the safe zone. Of course, that doesn't mean he would leave his boss there, Robert saved his life before. He knew that the only way to save his boss was to escape himself first. He stayed in Haditha as he had a feeling that IS didn't bring IS into their territory. The next day, he received a phone call from someone who picked up a $10 UA bill. On the bill, it said, if you call this number and tell him where you found the bill, you'll receive $100 in compensation. Nick first thought it was a trap, but it was his only hope. After meeting the man, Nick paid him the compensation and followed him to where he picked up the bill. It was fortunate that it was not a trap, Robert was cunning. 
He always hid a $10 bill in his shoe as he believed the first finance minister of the United States would bring him luck and riches. At the same time, it saved him in critical moments. It was clear that, Hamilton, saved him. Why don't you contact the embassy? The UA soldiers are all experts in hostage rescue, Jiang Chen said in a relaxed voice. It's the FBA who's behind this all. Those fools can't find evidence, so they wanted to get rid of Robert. With the cigarette in his mouth, he already put his shades on. Jiang Chen couldn't see his facial expression. Oh? I thought Robert represented the UA government. Jiang Chen shrugged. He did in Iraq, but it happened in Kane which is not related to the Iran problem, Nick briefly answered the question as he turned the wheel and drove off the road. It was clear that Robert trusted his bodyguard as he even explained these things to him. Jiang Chen remembered that Robert told him about smuggling oil before. It must be that he left some evidence and the FBA is after him. We are not going on the road? There is an IS station in the front, we can't pass. Also, we are almost there. Robert calmly drove the car into an alley and shut the engine. Jiang Chen opened the door and got out. He looked around and figured it was a ghetto. Occasionally a child's malnourished head popped out of the window and curiously looked at the two foreigners. But a hand would come and drag the children back into the room and tightly shut the window. These civilians are quite sensitive about the war. Jiang Chen smiled as he threw the cigarette butt onto the ground. The moment they were born they started to experience the war. Nick grabbed a backpack under the car seat. He saw Jiang Chen's relaxed look and raised his eyebrows. Are you sure this is okay? No problem, trust me. Jiang Chen sighed. In Iraq, Han Kung Fu is not that particularly helpful. In your foreigner's eyes, do all the Han know Kung Fu? Jiang Chen laughed at the remark. I should show him something. Jiang Chen's right hand reached behind his back and opened the storage dimension. In Nick's eyes, he just reached, and a pistol appeared in his hand. Nick was shocked as he didn't even sense Jiang Chen hid the gun. He also did not recognize the gun. This gun is? 11 tactical pistol, custom made, don't worry about it. Jiang Chen put the gun into his bag and shrugged. Nick nodded as he no longer questioned. Just like that, Jiang Chen followed Nick and walked to the building where Robert was held. Chapter 46, Rescue. There's one on the roof, for standing on the second floor, and five out front. Nick stretched out on top of the roof and used a pair of binoculars to observe the target structure. Robert is confirmed alive. The three-story tall building had at least ten terrorists on site. Nick began to worry for Jiang Chen as even for someone like him, it would be nearly impossible to rescue someone without alerting nearby guards. However, if they alerted the guards on patrol duty in the streets, then they must face the attack from an entire town of IS soldiers. Affirmative, just cover me when I back out. Jiang Chen stood by a fruit store picking fruits as he occasionally glanced at the IS soldiers passing by. He had a headscarf on his head with only his eyes exposed. It was exciting for him. He opened his mouth and took a deep breath before turning into an alley. He noticed that there was no one around, so he took out the bag Yao Yao gave him from the storage dimension and equipped it onto himself. The drone from the future was going to be useful now as an odd smile appeared on Jiang Chen's face. He connected his EP onto the palm-sized circle disc. The bottom of the drone slightly vibrated followed by an almost undetectable noise as it followed Jiang Chen's instruction and flew into the air. It carefully avoided the sight of the guards as Jiang Chen cautiously controlled the drone to fly over the wall onto the top floor. It recorded the heat map of the entire building as all the guards appeared on the EP map. After he had parked the drone on the top floor, Jiang Chen gave an order to Nick. Take out the scout on the top floor. Affirmative. Nick naturally noticed Jiang Chen's drone and was surprised by Jiang Chen's ability. He zoomed in with his M27 rifle. The silencer lightly buzzed. A blood hole appeared on the terrorist's forehead. As he was about to fall over, the drone hidden behind him popped a hook and carried his body to the middle of the roof and slowly released him. Not a single person noticed. Nick was completely stunned. He saw the indigo drone that the UA Special Forces used in Kane and he thought that represented the peak of the drone technology. But when he saw the palm-sized drone, his understanding of field was challenged. Silent enough to move behind the target and its hook powerful enough to drag the body. This was the first time he saw a drone that agile and discreet. His country's military technology is this powerful? Or is Jiang Chen representing an unknown force? Nick didn't understand, but he didn't need to understand. He knew that his boss could be rescued now. Jiang Chen used the image generated through his EP to determine the guard's distribution within the building. He took a deep breath and moved to the side of the building. He pressed against the ground, for the first time using all his strength in the modern world. Jiang Chen hopped two meters high, grabbed onto the roof of a small building and rolled beside the water tank. It was a smooth move. This was the muscle and reflex two times stronger than ordinary people. 
He gradually clenched his fingers and looked at the street across. It was three meters wide with little traffic. Eight meters away from the roof, with a height difference of two meters. How far is the closest patrol from this place? Jiang Chen used the communication device in his ear and asked. Two streets, Nick answered after he scanned the area. I am about to enter, watch out for me. Understood. Nick put the binoculars aside as he reloaded the M27 rifle. Fury. Red dots began to pop up in Jiang Chen vision. Even the wall cannot stop the vivid red from appearing, it belonged to the color of hearts beating. The desire to rip the hearts apart. All the cells in his body were boiling. He inhaled and tried to suppress the negative emotions from his mind as he slightly bent his knees. If it were two times his muscle strength, it would be questionable, but now it was four times. Abruptly, his pushed his legs down onto the ground and stepped back before he dashed across the eight-meter distance, grasping onto the roof of the third floor. Fu asterisk K, this hurts. The fury strengthened his muscle but not his bones. The shock from the impact with the wall made him grind his teeth together, but he managed to overcome the pain and initiated the tranquilizer on the EP. Fury disarmed. His heartbeat returned to normal. What is it? A terrorist looked out the window and scanned for any irregularity. Don't know, let Zayev go take a look. Jiang Chen held his breath as he pressed against the wall. He didn't understand what they were saying as he prayed that they won't look up. Jiang Chen was right above the IS soldier. If he got caught, then he would have to fight a violent battle. He wasn't afraid, but Robert's safety would be jeopardized. Jiang Chen's sudden move shocked Nick as he didn't suspect Jiang Chen to jump across. An 8-meter distance, 2-meter height difference? Superman? Nick didn't let his guard down when he saw Jiang Chen sneak into the building, his rifle aimed directly at the head stuck outside the window. If he looked up and saw Jiang Chen, Nick would have to kill him. Stealth entry would become a battle. Fortunately, it seemed that it was inconvenient to look up while wearing a hat, the terrorist didn't see anything odd, so he retracted his head. From common sense, no one could jump onto a building. Jiang Chen was relieved as he rolled onto the roof. The reason why he dared to use brute force to jump over was not that he didn't think it through. Instead, when Fury was activated, he saw the distribution of the people in the room. He estimated that the risk of being spotted was small, so he decided to use four times the strength of a regular people and jumped over. First, silence device. NATO Special Forces Equipment, he purchased at the 6th Street Junkyard for 30 crystals. The device could silence up to a radius of 10 meters. Although not as useful in the apocalypse, but quite handy in the modern world. It can be activated for 15 seconds. He laughed and took out the device from where Nick couldn't see. He pressed the device against the roof. He then started the drone and made sure the IS soldiers were unaware before he rotated the silent device's button. Buzz. It produced a sound of buzzing electricity. The surrounding air became unstable under the unique field, all sounds were erased. The brick roof was exploded open with dynamite. Jiang Chen did not hesitate as he took out his pistol and jumped into the room. Future tech was indeed powerful, no one noticed the violent explosion. With both feet on the ground, Jiang Chen saw Robert in the corner. He ripped off his headscarf and smiled. I can't believe you are the one saving me, my friend, Robert said with a bitter smile. Oh? Are you disappointed? Jiang Chen shrugged with a joking voice. No, I appreciate your help. Robert stood up and genuinely bowed down. If there is anything I can assist you with in the future, please don't hesitate to tell me. You still owe me a deal. Robert was confused for a brief second before he smiled. Not just a deal, my friend. Jiang Chen didn't continue talking with him. He retracted the silent device and walked to the door. Robert surprisingly looked at the pistol in Jiang Chen's hand. For as long as he has been in the firearm business, he never saw a gun like it. As well as the silent explosion. But Robert didn't ask, everyone had their own privacy. It would be impolite to ask. If he could rescue people, it won't be hard to kill people. Nick, the hostage is rescued. Cover me, Jiang Chen spoke into the communication device. I understand, Nick replied emotionlessly as a cruel smile appeared across his face. You bastards, I'll kill you all. He opened the safety. He locked onto a terrorist that looked like a commander and pulled the trigger. Bang! The blood hole penetrated through the target's head as he dropped down onto the floor. Enemy. Enemy. It's the UA citizens. Quick. But what they didn't know was, the one firing was a Belarusian, and the one rescuing was an Eastern man. Shouting noises resonated through the door, as well as the explosive firing of the assault rifles. Jiang Chen monitored the outside with the drone. Nick was indeed an experienced soldier. A single rifle was enough to suppress all the IS soldiers. The screaming bullets accurately penetrated through flesh and ended their sinful lives one by one. Nick managed to control the soldiers around the building. Jiang Chen waved at Robert signaling their retreat. He aimed his pistol at the wooden door. 
Bang. The wooden door was slammed open. A terrorist screaming a foreign language rushed in with an assault rifle and met a pistol in his face. Boom. With a hole in his forehead, the man dropped dead. Instincts, don't worry about it, Jiang Chen joked with the shocked Robert before he rushed out. Instinct? The drone's instinct. Walla walla la. Jiang Chen replied to the nonsensical screaming with a bullet. Although the 11 tactical pistol was only a pistol, it was technology from 100 years later. Despite the same size bullet, the material of the bullet as well as its accuracy was far superior compared to modern weapons. Although it was a pistol, it could easily shoot through the brick wall. The highly penetrative bullet made the IS soldiers around the stairs not dare to come close to the wall. But as they continued to hide, it troubled Jiang Chen as well. Since this is an IS-controlled territory, there was no way they could escape if this dragged on. Time to try the thermal detection grenade. A grimace appeared on Jiang Chen's face. The thing he got from Zhao Chenwu, the firearm dealer from the apocalypse. He popped the switch and threw the grenade away. The grenade in midair suddenly paused as flames began to spit out from one side. It was as if it had eyes, it flew directly at the IS soldiers around the stairs. They didn't even have time to duck down. The grenade exploded as soon as it detected heat. Boom. The explosive chips destroyed the entire staircase. Jiang Chen could almost sense the violent explosion. God, what are these things? Robert hid behind Jiang Chen's back as he blankly stared ahead. Some new gadgets. Stop talking, follow me. Jiang Chen changed a clip and rushed to the stairs. Thermal detection grenade. Those things were slightly pricey being five times the price of a regular grenade. It was only useful on humans and would be interfered by the cheaper EMP grenade or heat bait, so they were not as useful in the apocalypse. All of a sudden, the wooden floor crashed open on the side. Allah! A man with an assault rifle dashed out and tried to smash his gun against Jiang Chen's head. But he did have a reflex of 29, so he would not get hit by a surprise attack like that. A violent stream of air ripped through Jiang Chen's arm as the almost liquid phase nitrogen slammed onto the man's chest like a hammer. He flew away like a bomb and smashed against the wall. Should be dead. Damn, this thing could be used as a close-range weapon. Jiang Chen pleasingly looked at the metal bracelet on his arm. Robert stared dumbfoundedly at him. Jiang Chen glanced at him and half-jokingly said. I guess you are going to keep the secret for me, right? Robert continued to stare dully, but he nodded. God, is this a Hollywood movie? Jiang Chen was pleased by Robert's reaction as he signaled for him to follow and rushed downstairs. He was not afraid of Robert not keeping the secret, no one would believe some of the things that happened. Especially if he were smart enough, he would shut his mouth. Chapter 47, The Unexpected. Jiang Chen, get out. IS patrol squad already noticed the disturbances on the side, and they are sending backup. Nick's voice transmitted from the communication device. Understood. Nick waved at Robert and shouted, quick. Start running. Before he finished his sentence, Jiang Chen dashed out of the building and fired into the sky. The gunshot dispersed all the confused civilians. At the same time, he called Robert and headed directly into the alley. Damn asterisk it. There are heavy machine guns. Nick cursed as he quickly began to move. His position was already exposed when they cross-fired. The Toyota pickup truck carrying heavy machine guns drove through the streets and headed for the building where the hostage was held. The soldier on the pickup truck called the other soldiers while forcefully opening the switch, preparing to shoot. Tadada. The bullets fired like raindrops, quickly suppressing Nick's position which forced him to get on the floor and crawl to the stairs. He then jumped up and fled downstairs. The IS soldiers were not to be taken lightly as the 10-person patrol team carried their assault rifles and moved towards Nick's location with the intention of surrounding him. However, as a seasoned veteran, he stepped back and shot with his M27 while moving back to the car. On the other side, Jiang Chen used his EP to control the drone and avoided the chasing IS soldiers as they passed through the crossfire zone harm-free. Quick! Get in the car! You drive! Jiang Chen opened the door and pushed Robert in. He then flew the drone in Nick's direction. I have been surrounded, you guys leave first. Nick gritted his teeth and glanced at the wound on his left shoulder. He fired a few rounds with one hand and then ran into another alley. Although he remembered the layout of this place, his knowledge was nowhere comparable to the IS soldiers that regularly patrolled this area. Nick already accepted his fate, or else he should have already died in that small town in Kane. He would have repaid the favor. A grimace smile appeared on Nick's face as he slammed against the dugouts beside the road. He decided not to run anymore. He wanted to teach these bloodthirsty hounds who was the real warrior. Six o'clock direction, go through that alley, quick. The voice from his headphone made him pause for a brief second before he clenched his teeth and followed Jiang Chen's direction into the alley. Almost at the same time, he caught, 
with the corner of his eyes, a Toyota pickup truck that just ran across where he was. A drop of cold sweat rolled down his face as he immediately followed Jiang Chen's instruction and moved. There is a fruit store, go in it, there's a back door in the room. Under the guidance of the drone, all of the IS's movements were exposed. Although it was the complete opposite direction as the car, Nick chose to trust Jiang Chen's instruction. He kicked open the wooden door as he disregarded the screaming woman, the frightened man as well as the innocent children. He threateningly held his gun up and then with quick strides he aimed at the back door. Slam! Nick used his right shoulder, slammed open the door and got on another street. Cross the street and go into the alley before you make a left turn. The sound of IS soldiers' footsteps and shouting resonated from afar. Nick resisted the pain in his shoulder and carried his assault rifle across the street. The footsteps were moving away. It looked like they lost him. Nick let out a sigh of relief before he took out the bandage. He wrapped his wound while running. Under Jiang Chen's direction, he quickly got back to the car. We have to hurry, there are more and more IS soldiers coming in this direction. Jiang Chen helped Nick open the back door as he sat in the front passenger seat. Robert sat behind the wheel as he started the car. Nick ripped off his shirt and changed into a shirt that he previously prepared to cover his wound. Where are we going? Robert drove the car out of the alley and scanned around. Jiang Chen reached out of the window to retract the palm-sized drone as he stuffed it back into his pocket. Head into the desert, all the roads are blocked off. God. I am still alive, this is unbelievable. Robert steered the wheel as he exaggeratedly let out a long sigh. We haven't escaped yet. Jiang Chen said with a bitter smile. He still did underestimate the ability of the terrorists as they responded with such swiftness. The original plan was to follow the road and head back into Baghdad. IS is much stronger compared to other extremists. I thought you had plans, Nick had hesitated for a moment before he spoke. Jiang Chen heard the words as he smiled with bitterness. I really don't have a plan, looks like I have been too cocky this time. He was not worried about getting caught by the IS since he could always hide in the apocalypse. However, he couldn't bring Robert and Nick over. Robert sensed the awkwardness on Jiang Chen's face as he laughed. Don't worry, we'll see as we go. They can't be chasing us forever. He opened the GPS on the car. We still have enough fuel. We'll cross the desert and go from the northern side of the Tharthar Lake to Tikrit. If we are lucky, the government force should be in control of the area. A smile full of resignation appeared on Robert's face, but Jiang Chen couldn't even smile at all. In other words, if Tikrit is under the control of IS, they must take the gamble. If he knew it was so problematic, it's fine since he was already here and had the opportunity to test the strength of this equipment. Jiang Chen shook his head as he closed his eyes to rest. Surprisingly, he realized that he no longer felt uncomfortable killing people. It was hard to say if it was a good thing or not. Perhaps it was because all the people he killed deserved it. Jiang Chen remembered the atrocious acts conducted by the IS as he tried to justify his actions. Robert looked rather optimistic as he hemmed along with the tune on the car. The guy probably has seen too many deaths to be bothered by it. Once the explosive song played, the car lifted the dust up on the sandy ground and drove into the endless desert. Every single piece of sand here was covered by the smell of chaos. Xiaoxiu sat on the sofa with her head wrapped in a towel. Under the bathrobe, her smooth and silky legs could be faintly seen covered by droplets of water. It was in the midst of summer as the room was air-conditioned. She didn't change into clothes yet as she enjoyed the light breeze. Although she had a face more attractive than celebrities, even in her free time, it was still expressionless. She leaned against the sofa as she casually lifted her legs. She turned on the TV with the remote. Now we'll continue with the next piece of news. This morning, IS initiated an attack on Tikrit. The president of Iraq stated that they will do anything to defend Tikrit. Xiaoxiu didn't really care about international news. Like most of the modern professionals, she was more interested in comedy shows, especially the ones that made people laugh. Surprising, for someone who didn't like to smile enjoyed humor. There are no news today. Xiaoxiu let out a breath for reasons she couldn't explain. No news probably means he is safe. At least the news didn't say that a Han man was abducted and taken hostage. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs strongly advises citizens, and related news. Hmm? Why am I worried about him? Xiaoxiu was suddenly shocked as she subconsciously touched her lips as confusion flashed across her eyes. She shook her head and pushed out the always grinning face from her head as she began to change the channel. It must be because I have been too tired lately. With the comedians on the screen as well as the waves of laughter from the audience, Xiaoxiu temporarily forgot about what troubled her. Her breathing returned to normal as her emotion returned to normal. As the night fell, Jiang Chen leaned against the chair with a cigarette in his mouth. To prevent being spotted, the headlight must remain off. It would be too dangerous to keep going without any light, so Robert stopped the car. 
If you can't fall asleep, why don't you keep an eye out for now? Robert smiled bitterly as he pressed against the steering wheel. Nick in the back was already snoring up a storm. How far away? Jiang Chen blew a smoke ring out as he sighed. Probably two more days. There is enough water and food, you don't have to be too nervous. Robert shrugged. Jiang Chen rolled his eyes. Who is saving who? I am doing a lot to get rid of the ten tons of gold. Jiang Chen curled his lips. Ten tons? Robert suddenly stood up, but then a banging sound ensued. He hit his head against the roof, but he resisted the pain as he stared at Jiang Chen, full concentrated. Fu asterisk K, don't look at me like that. Jiang Chen was getting goosebumps as he moved back into contempt. He he. Robert touched his greasy blonde hair and moved back. I know there is a 100 million USD deal. But why would I do firearms? I'll just help you sell gold. Nope, I only stored this much gold over the years. I am starting to transition into other industries as well. Jiang Chen let out a sigh. Transitioning? Is there something else that's easier to sell? Robert couldn't fall asleep anymore as he also lit a cigarette. Technology. Technology? Buffet didn't even dare to touch that. Robert contumaciously sneered, I tried to open my own firearm company before but gave up soon after. The risk of development is too high, so I only sell the finished product. It is easier to make money this way. It is also more dangerous. Jiang Chen didn't disagree. Of course, but I love the adventure. Robert awkwardly laughed as he avoided the topic. The desert night was quiet and peaceful without a soul to be seen. As they got further away from Haditha, the occasional explosions started to fade as well. But within the quiet night sky, a short burst of homing noise could be heard once in a while. F-22, it's probably the UA doing scouting missions. Maybe we are already on the heat map. Robert lifted his head. Oh? Would the UA soldiers jump out and save you? Jiang Chen smiled. No way. We are only a white dot on the heat map. There are plenty of refugees in the desert. The good thing is that there is no weapon on the back of the car or some bullets may have flown down. Robert laughed at the remark. Jiang Chen gazed at the distant sky. The clouds were thin, and the moon was bright. But even in the moonlight, he couldn't see anything. I don't understand. I feel the IS soldiers are not that strong. With the airstrikes of so many nations, why would they not eradicate this problem already? Jiang Chen did not have the slightest positive feeling about this group. It has nothing to do with politics nor nationality. From a purely human perspective, any group that killed civilians and raped women are hideous and hated. For whatever reason, it cannot justify the crime against humanity. He wanted to laugh at the crazy group that said so many laughable claims, but he couldn't. It's normal. Robert shrugged, IS is not simply just a terrorist group. It's a frightening army combined with an ambitious government. A lot of them even received higher education and elite training which taught them how to avoid airstrike and scouting. Also, their opponents have their own personal agendas. Take Turkey, for example, their stance on IS was never clear. At that moment, Robert also smiled dubiously. Also, if the war ended this quickly, how would we feed ourselves? How would the unemployment rate go down? Jiang Chen thought about it as he laughed. He was right. Who cared, the Middle East was far from Hua. But for some reason, he constantly remembered the world that had fallen apart because of the nuclear war. The world where even the sun in the middle of a summer day could not cast its ray through the thick radiation cloud. The world where not a single piece of grain grew, and a world where millions of twisted faces instinctively practiced violence. Jiang Chen suddenly felt a chillness, he tried to wrap himself tighter with his clothes. The desert night was a bit too chill. Chapter 48, Refugees. Damn it. SH asterisk T. The car came to a slow stop as Robert smacked the steering wheel. Nick quietly walked out of the car as he lifted the front cover. The engine is busted. Fuasterisco kappa. Now we are screwed, Robert said with a voice of defeat. Jiang Chen thought if he should go back to the apocalypse for a while and bring back a levitating car. But it was only wishful thinking, he would not do that unless they were hopeless. If he did it, that would mean he was prepared to abandon the two of them. Then his gold sell off plan would be deserted and this Iraq trip would become pointless. Can you fix it? Jiang Chen asked. Let me try. Nick took the toolbox out from the back of the car as he began to work on the engine. However, the engine didn't seem to get any better. Just as they were about to lose hope, Jiang Chen suddenly saw a truck approaching from a distance. Is? He tensed up as he took out the pistol. Robert also noticed the truck, but his face looked ecstatic. Put your gun away, haha, we are saved. Quick. Shout with me. Haha, stop here. Here. Help. Robert waved his arms as he yelled at the truck to get its attention. The truck seemed to have noticed the three of them as it slowly drove in their direction. The truck stopped. Jiang Chen saw that the back of the truck was filled with malnourished refugees. 
Their clothes were ripped apart and only carried a small amount of luggage. All of them had the same tired and apathetic expression. Robert walked to the truck driver and spoke with him briefly before he returned full of joy. The driver agreed to give us a ride. It is tradition to help each other out in the desert. I promised him that we'll share the fresh water on our car. Since the car is going to be abandoned, let's take the fuel out as well. Nick, come help me. Okay, boss. Nick nodded and ensued. Jiang Chen and Nick sat in the back of the truck while Robert, trying to get close to the driver, sat in the passenger seat. Since only Robert knew Arabic, the two of them who sat with the refugees could only stare at each other and couldn't say a word. All the women were covered in thick headscarves while the men looked exhausted, the children also lacked the energy people of their age possessed. Everyone was tired. They must have suffered a lot. The atmosphere felt odd. A Belarusian and a Han here sure was weird. These people are probably Syrian refugees. Since Turkey shut down its borders, some of them chose to go through the Kurdish region and then be smuggled into Turkey. It's a coincidence that we were able to meet up. At least Jiang Chen knew a little English to be able to chat with Nick. Do they know English? Jiang Chen asked. Some probably do, but it doesn't look like they have the energy to chat. Nick shrugged his shoulders. The back of the truck was crowded and bumpy. A child who he couldn't tell the gender of sat beside Jiang Chen. The dirty face lacked energy and emotion as the messy hair carried a sour odor more pungent than Robert. Jiang Chen did not care too much about cleanliness as the entire truck was filled with the awful smell, so he didn't pay attention. Nick already started to snore as his years of military life had programmed him in such a way to preserve his energy. Except the snoring received a few stares in the truck. He really could sleep anywhere. Jiang Chen forced a smile as he also adjusted the way he sat to take a nap. The truck drove for a bit longer. It was around lunchtime as some refugees took out the food they carried and began to force it down with some water. The teen sitting beside Jiang Chen took out a black thing that resembled a piece of bread and began chewing. Perhaps it was because everyone was eating, Jiang Chen also felt hungry. He reached behind him, and when no one was looking, he took out a box of Oreos from the storage dimension. He opened the package as he started to eat it. He was prepared for this kind of unexpected situation so he would always store some emergency food and medicine. Jiang Chen suddenly noticed that a pair of eyes were peeking at him. Precisely, peeking at him chewing the food. Do you want some? Jiang Chen smiled as he handed the box over. The pair of eyes quickly fled. However, they seemed to have noticed that Jiang Chen had no ill intentions as that person took over the half box of cookies and only hesitated slightly before devouring them. This guy was comparable to how Sun Jiao eats. A smile appeared on Jiang Chen's face. Thank you. The person replied in English. The person then seemed to have realized that the box was empty before a guilty expression surfaced and they lowered their head. Sorry. Don't worry, I still have lots, Jiang Chen said with a friendly smile, can I know your name? Aisha, 17 years old. She was a girl. He was wondering why the voice was so light. Maybe because she was not an adult yet, and she didn't wear the headscarf like all the other women in the truck. My name is Jiang Chen, I come from Hua. Where are your parents? They got killed by the IS, all because my mom rejected those devils' demand. Aisha's voice was calm and emotionless, without much sorrow on her face. It made Jiang Chen speechless, as he didn't expect such a depressing topic. Sorry, Jiang Chen gently said, but he received a peculiar look. What happened? Jiang Chen asked confusedly. He was not sure if he said something he shouldn't have since he only knew the peaceful way of life. Nothing. I just didn't expect someone to say sorry to me. Aisha turned her head. Do you have any plans once you get to Turkey? Jiang Chen forced a smile as he decided to talk about something lighter. Perhaps once she started her new life, she would be slightly happier. No plan, head to refugee camp and receive humanitarian aid, and see if there is a Saudi or Turkish man that's willing to buy me. I am still a virgin, if I dress up, it shouldn't be a problem. The girl's voice was calm, with an awareness and apathy unfitting for her age. Okay, looks like any topic will become depressing. Jiang Chen chose to shut up. The truck would still stop overnight due to possible dangers. The driver also needed to rest. At this time the refugees would choose to go the washroom and stand outside for a bit of the light breeze. Jiang Chen got out of the truck and went to the washroom. He also lavishly took out some paper to whip. Once the car stopped, Robert came and chatted with the two of them for a while. He still went back to the passenger seat when he slept. Robert said that he slipped the driver a Franklin bill and the driver immediately became more welcoming. At night, Jiang Chen felt hungry again. He had too many Oreos, so Jiang Chen took out another kind of strawberry cookies and began to chew on them. He heard a faint gulping sound beside him and thought about it briefly before he smiled and gave half of the cookies to the girl. Try it, it's from my hometown. The girl didn't respond. Instead, she started to devour the food. 
Jiang Chen looked at her and didn't say anything. Since he was full, it was time to sleep. Jiang Chen leaned against the truck as he drifted into sleep. Although snores could be heard all over the truck, tiredness was the best sleeping pill. As to Nick, this guy always fell asleep instantaneously, he also wakes up at random intervals. The thunderous snoring already started to ring. Except what Jiang Chen didn't notice was a pair of eyes that examined him. Aisha licked the cookie crumbs off of her fingers as she looked at the side of Jiang Chen's face. Her eyes were filled with confusion. The next morning, Jiang Chen woke up on the bumpy ride. We are almost there. Nick noticed Jiang Chen waking up and looked at the phone screen. GPS shows that we are only 40 kilometers away from Tikrit. The roaring engine noise filled his ear as the vibration of the engine almost made Jiang Chen lose the feeling in his back. He wiped his face with his hand as dust filled his palm. He was slightly shocked before he quickly realized. This is definitely not a place to stay. That's good, I can't wait to take a hot shower, and then sleep. Jiang Chen stretched as he forced a smile. The battery in his phone was almost drained. To prepare for the unexpected, he decided to shut it down. I have a bad feeling. Nick frowned as he touched his black backpack. His M27 was in it. I hope you are wrong. Hopefully. Nick closed his phone as his phone was about to die as well. Aisha raised her head to look at the two foreigners before putting her chin between her arms and closing her eyes. Looks like we won't get to Turkey. Being born among the chaos, she was too familiar with the smell. The smell of death. Chapter 49, The Flames of War. I have a company in the UA, a massive one. I like what you do. If you want, you can come drive for me. Don't worry about the green card either, the Senate is really close to me. Robert was passionately bullish asterisk ting in the passenger seat, happily chatting with the driver who was wearing a red headscarf and holding a cigarette in his mouth. Bang! Spider web cracks had swept across the window pane before it shattered, scattering in like snowflakes. SH asterisk T. Robert quickly rolled underneath the seat and grabbed the steering wheel, resisting the pain from the cuts on his head as he pulled the truck to a stop. The driver who previously had a bright smile on his face now had a gaping, bloody hole in his head. The truck shook violently, the intense vibrations jostling the unprepared refugees to the ground. At the same time Jiang Chen grabbed the metal handle behind him, he grabbed onto Aisha who was about to fall out and dragged her back into the truck. The truck swung left and right on the desert sands before it came to a gradual stop without tipping over. The back of the truck was chaos. Women trembled and sobbed with their hands over their heads while the men who managed to regain their balance held onto their luggage with uncertainty, they had an overwhelming expression of fear on their faces. Without question, it was I.S. This was the death sentence. What happened, D. Asterisk Mitt. Are you okay? Jiang Chen caught his breath as he dragged Aisha up. Looking at Jiang Chen, Aisha emotionlessly shook her head. Blood dripped out from the corner of her mouth, most likely from biting herself during the fall. Fortunately, she hadn't been thrown out from the truck. I.S. Slave Catchers. They're active in the desert and occasionally visit villages. Women will be forced to become sex slaves and men will either be killed or forced to join their group. Could you give me a bullet? If I save my virginity, I can go to heaven. No. Jiang Chen smiled. That smile made Aisha blank out for a moment. Then I'll pray for you. The girl looked down, hiding her eyes behind her greasy, black hair strands. Prepare to engage. Nick leaned against the truck with his M27 already loaded and locked. I wonder how Robert is doing, Jiang Chen murmured under his breath as he took out the 11 tactical pistol. Following Nick's signal, he quickly leaned against the other side of the door. The refugees in the truck stared at them with stark desperation. They moved out of the way and covered their heads as they prayed for safety and victory for the two strangers. The sound of a machine gun firing rang out from a distance, but none of the bullets hit the truck. A Toyota pickup truck equipped with a heavy machine gun slammed to stop beside the truck before several masked soldiers jumped out. I surrender. Robert crawled out of the passenger seat with his hands on his head. He knew that with his ability, the best he could do was not hold the others back. The IS soldier was ecstatic when he saw it was a white man. He turned around and spoke with his commander before he struck Robert in the face with his gun barrel, knocking him to the ground. Search the back, quick. The commander stood before Robert with his AK, his face twisted into a grimace that flashed his white teeth. With a face that seemed close to crying, Robert looked up and forced a smile, only to receive a boot in the face. Drag him to the car for ransom, the commander ordered as the soldiers dragged him towards the Toyota pickup. When he heard these words, Robert let out a sigh of relief. These people were likely from Haditha. If these devils knew that he was an escapee, perhaps his limbs would have already been chopped off and the video uploaded online. As long as he did not die, there were always opportunities. Two soldiers with AKs leisurely walked towards the back with smiles on their faces. They chatted as they lifted the blinds up. It was a sweet job. 
Although the slaves they captured didn't belong to them, they had the liberty to pick out one or two to enjoy first, and no one would punish them. They fired two bullets into the air and grinned with satisfaction as they heard the screeching from inside the truck. The two men glanced at each other before the man on the right climbed into the truck first. There was no better way to unleash his interest in brutality than taking in the frightened looks. A grim smile appeared on the terrorist's face. Suddenly from the shadows, a giant hand reached out with polar bear-like strength and snapped the fragile neck. Jiang Chen straightforwardly swung his arm like a hammer and smashed the other terrorist's head into the ground with his superhuman power. I'll go to the front to save Robert. You try to catch their attention from here, and be careful of the machine gun. Finished explaining, Nick quickly jumped out of the car. Jiang Chen shook his slightly numb right hand. He was planning on using the pistol to smash the terrorist's skull, but he accidentally hammered with his arm instead. The result was the same regardless. Looks like I need to study some combat technique. Relying on pure strength is cutting it too close. Jiang Chen sighed as he grabbed the AK off the floor and lightly jumped out. He turned the corner and opened fire at the pickup truck, catching the terrorists by surprise. Robert had yet to be dragged onto the pickup truck when the gunshots made the terrorist drop him and began firing back. Without hesitation, a terrorist spun the machine gun to face Jiang Chen before unleashing a storm of bullets at Jiang Chen. In response, an explosive amount of nitrogen burst out from Jiang Chen's right arm, blocking all of the bullets mid-air. What is that thing? The commander ducked behind the truck and craned his head around the corner to look at Jiang Chen with a look of horror. I don't know. The bullets can't penetrate it. The machine gunner fired ferociously, but his desire to rip Jiang Chen apart with the bullets was futile. Clank! The bullets ran out. The soldiers grabbed their AKs to shoot at Jiang Chen, hoping to gain time for the machine gunner to reload. Despite their efforts, however, bullets from the other side began to accurately take all of them down. It was Nick, who had begun his attack with the M27. Since Jiang Chen's nitrogen armor was reaching its limit, he started shooting under the cover of Nick's surprise attack. Whether he hit anyone was another question entirely, but at least the recoil was nothing for his muscle strength. D asterisk M it. Use the white man as a hostage. Get up, the commander yelled at a soldier. He could not leave cover with so many bullets suppressing his movements. The soldier by the hill was also nervous. He couldn't hit Nick who was hiding behind the truck's engine, and his two companions were killed instead. But as he turned and reached for Robert, a gun was already pressed against his head. Fu asterisk KU. Robert pulled the trigger without hesitation. The gun was from a soldier who died from Nick's bullets. The commander saw Robert move and aimed his AK towards him. A sudden impact against his side, however, blew him 10 meters away, breaking almost every single one of his ribs. Jiang Chen retracted the overheated nitrogen armor and then looked at the half-dead machine gunner before he finished the deed with one more bullet. Boss, are you okay? Nick walked up and helped Robert up. SH asterisk T, this Fu asterisk King hurts. Robert covered his bruised face as he stood up cursing. He then turned to Jiang Chen and asked, Is that guy dead? His ribs are broken, so as good as dead. Jiang Chen shrugged. Good job. Robert raised his pistol and shot two more bullets. The commander on the ground didn't even have the strength to scream. What do we do now? Nick checked the pickup truck in the front. The fuel is good for 200 kilometers, and we can head to Baghdad by ourselves. Let's do that. Robert limped past the truck and grabbed the backup fuel tank and water tank that previously belonged to their old car. What about those refugees? Jiang Chen looked at the truck and asked. Robert and Nick stared at Jiang Chen with a look of disbelief. What? Jiang Chen said with a bitter smile. Buddy, Robert threw the supplies onto the pickup truck and patted Jiang Chen on the shoulder, since the IS patrol team is already here, that means Tikrit is probably conquered. The United Nations can take care of the humanitarian stuff. We don't belong here, and we don't need to worry about them. With enough fuel, we can directly head to Baghdad. It's enough to remind them of the danger ahead. If we go with them, we'll be too big of a target. I agree with the boss. Nick took out a black marker and climbed onto the engine cover as he proceeded to draw some odd symbols on the roof. Fine. Jiang Chen shrugged. Although he pitted the refugees, he knew that too much of it would only cost him his own life. I'll go tell them. What are you drawing? UA symbol, to prevent the drones from blowing us up. Nick wiped the sweat off of his forehead. Black can absorb heat, so the thermal detection device can detect the UA symbol on top of the roof. This way, we won't get blown apart. The car belonged to IS after all. Jiang Chen flipped open the blinds covering the back of the truck as many pairs of frightened eyes locked onto him. Tikrit is dangerous. IS may have occupied the place. Baghdad is safe. That's all. Jiang Chen took a deep breath and gave them the news feeling uncomfortable in this atmosphere. 
At least some of them had to know English as the refugees began to chat among themselves. They appeared to be even more frightened by the news. He did his deed here, whether they liked it or not. He sighed and was about to turn around and leave when a hand gently grabbed him. Hmm? Jiang Chen turned around and saw the dirty face of the girl from earlier. Under the dry and greasy black hair strands were eyes filled with pleading and uncertainty. She said something in Arabic, but Jiang Chen couldn't understand, so he shook his head in confusion. Perhaps the words were too complicated for the girl to express in English. Maybe she is hungry? After thinking for a moment, Jiang Chen took out a box of cookies and handed them to her. The girl shook her head and after hesitating, she opened her mouth and said with a raw voice, Please take me with you. Jiang Chen was shocked. He first smiled, ready to reject, but then he gazed into her eyes and saw the pleading look in them. No plan, head to refugee camp and receive humanitarian aid, and see if there is a Saudi or Turkish man that's willing to buy me. For some strange reason, Jiang Chen remembered the words the girl spoke yesterday. They had pierced his heart like nails. He opened his mouth as he looked at the girl's dirty face and couldn't say a word. He sighed. This sympathy again. Follow me. Jiang Chen exhaled as he jumped out of the car. The girl's rigid face finally displayed a flicker of joy. She prayed genuinely and immediately followed after him. You're finally back. Let's get on our way. Robert noticed the girl behind Jiang Chen, and the way he looked at Jiang Chen suddenly became dubious as he lightly whistled. Nick, who was usually expressionless, also glanced at Jiang Chen with a suspicious look. It's not what you guys think. Jiang Chen tried to defend himself. How are you going to take care of her? Why don't you come to the UA and work with me? Utah supports polygamy. Robert patted Jiang Chen's shoulder, who was sitting in the passenger seat. And get on the FBA wanted list with you? Jiang Chen rolled his eyes. Ahem, won't ever happen again. Since I escaped, a lot of things will be different. Robert started the car, but not before Jiang Chen caught a glimpse of cunning that did not fit the young age of his face. Jiang Chen leaned against the chair and didn't respond. I mean, my brother, anyone has moments of highs and lows, especially for people like us who engage in dangerous businesses. If your business is not doing so well, come find me, Robert said calmly, but Jiang Chen heard the sincerity in his voice. I am a good businessman now. Jiang Chen laughed, but he remembered Robert's words deep down. No way, you are bullshastrous ting me. Robert smiled as he gripped the steering wheel. Nick and Aisha sat mutely in the back. Nick had his shades on and was probably resting while Aisha gazed at the back of Jiang Chen's head with her mouth slightly open, but no words came out. Robert speaks Arabic, Nick suddenly said. A smile appeared on his mustached face. Aisha hesitated for a moment as she shot a grateful look at Nick. After pondering, she rallied her courage and said the same words again. Robert, who was chatting with Jiang Chen, suddenly stopped and gave Jiang Chen a dubious look again. What did she say? Jiang Chen noticed Robert's expression and asked. I pray to Allah that you are able to punish the devils that pretend to use his mercy. Then, even if you believe in heresy, I can still be the present from the desert and become your wife. I'll be gentle like a camel and attend to you and your wife. As long as you give me a place? This is so corny. I had to translate into English and then into Han, so it might be a bit off, but that's the meaning of it. Robert made fun of Jiang Chen, looking like he was about to burst from holding back his laughter. What the fu asterisk K. This was the only thing Jiang Chen could force out. Utah supports polygamy. Do you need a green card? Robert laughed raucously. You can save that for yourself. He didn't have plans to expand internationally. True, but it's only paperwork after all. I know someone from Hong Kong who has ten wives, just not officially, Robert replied. I don't even have a wife yet. Robert looked at Jiang Chen full of surprise. That's impossible. You don't have a woman with this much money? Hee <laughs> hee, how about when I get back to Los Santos, I'll invite you to try some of the girls on the movie screens. Next time, after I take care of the gold, I still have other things to figure out. Jiang Chen stared out the window as he lit up a cigarette. Hee <laughs> hee, now that I think about it, all of the Middle Eastern beauties come from Lebanon and Syria. The girl obsessed with you in the back is a little young, but once she grows up, she'll probably be a beauty. I probably won't come back to this God-forbidden place in a while, but before I leave, I'll go to the Turkish border and bring a Syrian beauty back. Robert narrowed his eyes into the endless desert. Jiang Chen rolled his eyes at the pervert and ignored him. As for how he was going to take care of Aisha, he still had no idea. He sighed and rubbed his temple. The first thing is to take her back home. As for the visa, it should be simplified with money. Since he had the funds, it was always good to do some good deeds. Did he have other thoughts? With the dry and greasy hair hanging around her dirty face, he really didn't have any for now at least. Chapter 50, FBA Agent Besides a small-scale sandstorm, the remaining journey was smooth without any unexpected events. The three of them took turns driving. 
Even Jiang Chen, who did not own a car, had a driver's license. After Robert discussed with Nick and Jiang Chen about detouring around Tigret since it was likely IS territory, they decided to follow Tharthar Lake and head northeast through Samara before arriving in Baghdad. This was their plan to avoid all possible high-activity areas. At night, the four of them stayed in the car. The sound of fighter jets screeching above them made the whole evening a tense affair. Despite that, no bombs dropped down thanks to the black pen that clearly served its purpose. Nick found a random reason to change seats with Jiang Chen, leaving Robert to lean towards Jiang Chen's ear with an unclear expression and say with a lowered voice, Don't worry, I'm pretty dead when I sleep. If you want to, hee hee, I won't look. Robert also glanced with a smirk at Aisha who was huddled into a ball in the corner. Fu asterisk K off. Jiang Chen didn't have the desire to at this point, and even if he did, the smell was too awful. For these refugees who ran for their lives, they didn't have the time to clean themselves as every moment was focused on survival. As for Aisha, whose beautiful features were hidden by the dirt, she was aware of her terrible body odor and kept to her corner in a vain attempt to avoid bothering Jiang Chen. To be fair, although she smelled, it was not at a level where Jiang Chen couldn't bear it. If he could fall asleep in the pungent truck from before, then he wouldn't mind the smell now, especially since Robert who hadn't showered in over a week probably smelled worse. I? I might have some odor, but I can promise that once I shower, I'll use my body to make you satisfied. Aisha bit her lips as she spoke. It took almost all of her courage to say these words aloud. Two whistles came from the front of the car as Robert and Nick obviously hadn't fallen asleep yet. These two animals. Jiang Chen cursed in his mind. Ahem, I, I really don't mind, he said a bit awkwardly. Aisha blushed, but it was not visible from under the dirt. Is it okay for Islamic women to marry a Han? I heard that the Han believe in Confucius, Robert said mockingly. She silently gazed at Jiang Chen. Following your logic, we also thought your people were all Christians but you say sh t more than you say God. Also, did your Han teacher never tell you that Confucianism is not a religion? Jiang Chen shot back. Of course, this was debatable. Robert shrugged and laughed. Don't look at me like that. I do pray when necessary. Jiang Chen looked at Aisha, and after some hesitation, asked with a serious voice, as you've already heard, I don't believe in anything and don't plan on it either. I heard that Islamic women are not allowed to marry people of other religions. Is this still okay? No problem. Aisha shook her head. You helped Allah to eradicate the demons in his name. You are my savior. Without you, I probably would have died in humiliation. Since you saved me, I am yours. Jiang Chen's throat gulped slightly as he silently gazed into the peacefulness in her eyes. To be honest, he was tempted. No man could resist a beautiful girl like this, especially him, who had been a virgin for over twenty years and lost his virginity in another world. Of course, righteous men would be different, but Jiang Chen was honest enough to admit his personal flaws. Without the proper environment to shape him, he grew up acting like anyone else. If she wanted it, then it was up to her. Perhaps after a shower, her beautiful foreigner looks would come through. Maybe she would be a good driver. With these thoughts, he felt relieved and didn't pursue his musings. As for the two animals up front, the thunderous snores had already begun. The next morning, they grabbed a couple of crackers to eat between sips of water as breakfast. According to the GPS, they were very close to Baghdad. Twenty kilometers northwest of the city limit, they got stopped by the patrolling UA forces, but after a brief inspection, the soldiers didn't give them any trouble. Robert displayed his green card to the patrolling officer and managed to borrow their car's satellite phone. After making a few calls, he returned the phone. Although the UA soldiers were not known for their good behavior, when they encountered their own citizens, they were quite friendly. After all, no one wanted to receive a subpoena from the court. The soldier from Ohio struck up a conversation with Jiang Chen thinking he was a reporter. Nick, who already naturally looked like a bodyguard, began to smoke beside the Hummer. Aisha hid in the car despite the interior's humidity. It was easy to tell how terribly the UA soldiers had acted in the past from the distrust in her eyes. Several minutes later, a black shadow appeared in the distant horizon. It was a little bird helicopter in which Jiang Chen also recognized a familiar face. The violent gusts of air from the helicopter swirled the sands away from itself and into the surrounding people. Once the helicopter safely landed, the man in the passenger seat unbuckled his seatbelt and jumped down. Bruce, my old buddy, we meet again, Robert greeted as he approached and gave the mercenary in combat uniform a hug. SH asterisk T, why do you smell so bad? Looks like you haven't been doing well lately. Bruce patted Robert on the back and then immediately pushed him away. Ahem, I have been doing terrible lately, but that's all in the past. Robert dusted the sand off his body and flashed his white teeth in a grin. I don't think this can be solved so easily. Mr. Robert, nice to meet you again. 
Another middle-aged man with a sharply pointed nose disembarked from the helicopter. He gave a keen look towards Jiang Chen who felt quite uncomfortable, but he only frowned slightly and didn't say much. Ahem, Mr. Lawrence, nice to meet you. Robert smiled awkwardly and extended his hand. Looks like you managed to escape danger, Lawrence said casually as he shrugged. Bruce stood beside Jiang Chen and greeted him. I can't believe you came here to help him. Bruce forced a bitter smile and took the cigarette Jiang Chen passed over. Who is this person? Robert seems to be afraid of him. Jiang Chen leisurely blew a smoke ring. Lawrence Oden, FBA agent. Please don't release my information to irrelevant foreigners, Mr. Bruce, or I'll have to deliver my doubts on your work quality to Blackwater International on behalf of the FBA. Lawrence heard their conversation and put Robert aside as he walked towards Jiang Chen's direction. With his back towards Lawrence, Bruce rolled his eyes at Jiang Chen and rolled his shoulders. A guy that's not that easy to get along with. Jiang Chen locked gazes with Lawrence who stood in front of him. The uncomfortable stare continued for a while before Lawrence opened his mouth. Are you here on behalf of your country? Or as an individual? Robert is only a business partner, Jiang Chen said calmly. Then I hope your business is successful and that you avoid getting involved with this matter. Lawrence didn't try to lower his voice from Robert in the slightest, glancing at him directly as he talked to Jiang Chen. Ahem, don't be like this, buddy. Robert rolled his eyes. Maybe we can talk? I don't have any interest in your conflict. Maybe you can discuss it in private? Jiang Chen smiled. Discuss? Lawrence opened his palms and smiled humorlessly at Robert. How do you want to discuss these 400 tons of oil from Iran? Are you out of your mind? There is no evidence now. Robert smirked, not phased in the slightest. He reached out and thumped his hand on Lawrence's shoulder. Buddy, maybe we can make a deal. Hmm? I'm listening. Lawrence scoffed at him but didn't push Robert's hand away. To prevent these sort of unexpected events from occurring, I usually have an extra layer of protection when I conduct business in highly sensitive area. For example, a box of empty bullets that are installed with a GPS signal. Where these firearms go, you can imagine. A cunning look flickered in Robert's eyes. Lawrence's facial expression drastically changed. Where is it? Right here. Robert grinned and threw a smartphone into Lawrence's hands. Congratulations, future head agent Mr. Lawrence. This is going to be a big deal. Your smartest saved you this time. I'll let this one incident go. Lawrence peered at Robert for a long time before he turned and put the phone into his suitcase. He then dashed for the little bird helicopter. Bruce, let's go. We have to go back to the aircraft carrier. Okay, boss. Bruce answered and shrugged helplessly at Jiang Chen before he followed. And also that Biden. I need to have a chat with him. Robert yelled at the helicopter that was lifting off. Do whatever. The witness protection program was only a verbal promise, whether it was kept depended on Lawrence. You guys made a deal? Jiang Chen asked Robert. Yeah, a missile guided by the GPS could send all those beasterisk stars into heaven. I bet they're all busy carrying the firearms into their warehouses. SH asterisk T, this is big. Robert smiled gleefully and held onto Jiang Chen's shoulder. Let's forget about these politicians with their hands full of SH asterisk T. I'll treat you to some fine booze in Baghdad. You're not nervous at all. Jiang Chen was speechless. I've been in this industry for too long. Maybe I'll think about transitioning to a different industry. Robert shook his head. The Iran oil business is done for. I'll have to go to Saudi Arabia and close down the shell company. The three of them returned to the pickup truck and said their goodbyes to the patrolling UA soldiers. Robert settled into the driver's seat and started the car towards Baghdad. Do you have any idea what you want to do now? Jiang Chen casually asked. Somewhat. That's right. Movies. Haha, <laughs> Hollywood movie producer doesn't sound so bad. Next time you come to Los Santos, I'll arrange some Hollywood girls for you. Robert smiled. Hollywood celebrities, can you afford them? Jiang Chen glanced at Robert as he chuckled. Robert smiled with his hands on the steering wheel. Los Santos is a place filled with dreams. As long as you're a movie producer, those blonde girls who dream of becoming famous overnight will prepare their asses for you. That god asterisk MN place, it's magnificent. Looks like it's the same for any country's entertainment industry. Jiang Chen chuckled as he suddenly remembered Lu Yao. A grin surfaced. Maybe he should also become a movie producer. It was only a way to spend money after all.